Well, hello, beloved. This is Evangelist Gary Lee, and I'm glad to have you with me today as we talk about a new subject. Each time we'll talk about a new subject that's going to edify you, and hopefully some of the words that I say um, will minister to you. You know, if even there's one word that I say or one sentence that I say that causes you to think and causes you to minister to your heart and to your mind, then it's worth it all. Hopefully you'll receive all of it. But it's the purpose of all of it is to bring you into a closer walk with Jesus Christ. And that's what we all want. So again, as I said before each week, God loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. I love you. And God only wants the best for you the very best, and for all of us to be as one, that there be no division in the body of Christ. And that's why Jesus probably left out the word denomination in, in the Bible. It's not in there. So it's okay to have some of our own doctrines and creeds, but if it divides us from Jesus Christ and him being lifted up, then that's not a good thing, for he wants us to be as one. He prayed in the garden that we would all be as one, even as he and the Father is one. So he all wants us to be one and one accord. If we'd all stand up in unity and in one accord, we'd find a, a whole lot less problems with the government and the world because we're standing up unified together. Well, what I want to talk to you about is... Uh, Put my papers over here. What I want to talk to you about is uh, how the church uh, has lost some of its focus, and a lot of people have lost a lot of their focus. Now, I recently visited into another state, and I noticed that uh, a lot of people were involved in a lot of sports activities and things like that. And, you know, that's a multi-billion dollar industry. But few people realize that a lot of the players that play in the NFL and some of the other sports team, I mean, they're making millions and millions of dollars. But a lot of these people are very, very unhappy. In fact, a lot of them have considered suicide and have committed suicide. And that's because that cannot fill the hole that's in their heart. That hole that's in a person's heart was only made to be filled by one, and that is God, that is Jesus Christ. Maybe you're that person out there today. So the fascination with footballs and golf balls and tennis balls and soccer balls and ping pong balls, I'm trying to list them all, basketballs, Tether balls, baseballs, maybe you can think of more balls. But, you know, our dogs and our cats play with balls. Our kids play with balls. But let me le read you a, a scripture. You know, this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, beginning in verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So what I'm trying to tell you is, you know, as far as entertainment and far as having that be the thing that we want to seek after rather than the things of God, um, it's a diversion and it diverts people's attention, it diverts people's money, and they feel like they're entitled to have some fun and enjoyment. Now, I, Jesus went often away into the mountain to pray, and his disciples, and I, I see no wrong if somebody wants to go out and spend time to get away from everything, and to maybe take a vacation. But I'm talking about an ongoing, talking about football all the time, talking about baseball all the time, they're so consumed with it. The only thing we should be consumed with is Jesus Christ and the Word of God. When you get around the table, rather than talking about things that don't even matter, why don't you talk about the things that do matter? 
about your spiritual life. Because the things in this world is temporary. And since everything's temporary, why do we want to have our discussion in full time about that which is going to pass away? For even our very lives are held in the hand of God. We don't even know about tomorrow, let alone today. So don't take it for granted that everything's just going to remain the way it is. Because you are not a part of this world. You're in the world, but you're not a part of it. And we are pilgrims just passing through. We are ambassadors for Christ. We are representatives of the King of Kings. And so that doesn't mean we quit our jobs. We have to work. We have to do those things. But what it does mean is let our focus be on Christ. And let our minds be on him. And so I'm telling you this, what Paul is writing is, we're no longer children, those things that are childish. One church I went to, they built a $9 million football field for everybody to come and play on. Well, that sounds like a great thing, a $9 million football field. However, when I went around the city, around I see people laying in the street, laying on park benches, laying next to buildings, and they're hungry. They have no food, not enough clothes, and they have no shelter. So something doesn't seem to be quite in line. It's a non sequitur. It doesn't line up to be building these things and not taking care of what the obvious is our fellow man who is dying in the street. So the money would be better spent on helping the homeless and those that are in need of food. We're doing more for the kingdom of God when we help our fellow man that we can see they're in need. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to do that. So I mentioned to you before about about uh, being in health and prospering and that God wants us. Matthew chapter 8 speaks about how Jesus Christ himself, he bore our sicknesses and he carried away our diseases. This is something he did on the cross. He not only took our sins away, but he took our sicknesses away. But you have to reach in and take it. You know, you have to claim it. You have to believe it. You have to receive it. You have to say, this is mine. It belongs to me. And you have to have faith for it. So the Bible says, if you believe you have received, then you will receive. So it it is with faith. And so it is with, with healing. Healing is your birthright in Christ. For God wants you to walk in health. So how can you serve him best is it when you're in health. Now, those that are sick right now and maybe you're in a hospital or at home or you're on crutches or you're handicapped and you're not able to come to church, my encouraging word to you is to look to Jesus, look to his word, and seek him for a touch in your body. For God would want to touch you and God want to help you And I'm not uncompassionate toward you at all if you're in a condition that you certainly need God's help. My prayers go out to you that you'll receive that help and encouragement no matter what it is. Even if you've lost a limb, that God cares about that. And some of these great revivals coming up, there has been people that have had limbs that have actually grown out I went to one it was not filmed at a revival but I went to one a person's leg was shorter than the other and after prayer it grew out to the length of the other one Uh, barely took a second I mean maybe not even a second the next thing I know I had him up walking back and forth and all their pain was gone it wasn't me that did it it was Jesus Christ that did it I'm just a vessel you know people say are you this are you that I say I'm just, I'm dirt, I'm nothing, 
I'm just a vessel for God to use for his glory. That's it. And so if you get a healing, it's God that gave it to you. And, it, and uh, the greatest healing of all is the salvation of your soul being converted to believe in Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes we are healed. And then he's also said that I would, that you would prosper and be in health. So Jesus has compassion on you, and he has compassion on you today. So believe it, and it will happen. You know, Father Abraham was told that he would have a child. As a young man, you know, he's told his wife couldn't have a child. But God said, you're going to be the father of many nations, so much that even all the stars, if they could be counted, that's how many your descendants are going to be. Now, how can you believe something like that when you, your own wife is not able to have a child, and yet God is telling you you're going to have that many descendants? Well, Abraham believed God, and because he believed God's promise to him, it was credited to him for being righteous. So the years go by. You can imagine, five years go by. His wife is still not pregnant. Ten years go by. But Abraham did not waver in his belief that God had made a promise. So when this word of God, which is very much alive, has made a promise to you, I'm encouraging you to hold on to it until you get it. Because Abraham went 15 years, now 20 years. Now his wife is 90. Okay, so in the natural, you can say, uh, pretty much you can say, forget it. It's going to be impossible to have a child at 90 years old. And he's about 100 years old. So they're practically on their way out. But Abraham still believed God was going to keep his word. And sure enough, his wife Sarah had a baby at 90 years old. And God fulfilled his promise, and Isaac was born. And out of Isaac, many nations uh, perceived out of that, and Abraham being 100 years old. So the promise was fulfilled, and he became the father of many nations all over the world. That promise came true. It looked like it wouldn't, wasn't going to come true. And sometimes the trying of our faith, but it should work patience to understand that it will come if we will just hold on and not give up. Now, some people may say, well, how long should I pray? I say pray until you get an answer. That's how long you pray. I've had to pray sometimes for hours on end until I get through. And that's because we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against powers of darkness. We are fighting against the demons of hell. We are fighting against principalities and things that are in the unseen world. And so that's why we have to persist in prayer with the Word of God through faith and pierce into the heavenlies before we get before the throne of God and have our petitions, our prayers heard before Him, for the answer is on its way. God's not going to deny you of anything. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all the promises of God are yes and amen. So I want to tell you a little bit about Jacob. And that happens to be the guy that's helping me film right now. That's his name too, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you about him. But I'm going to tell you about, other than he's a great guy, but uh, Jacob in the Bible. So Jacob was left alone. How many times have you been left alone? You know, sometimes, sometimes that's a good thing to be just totally left alone because then you can be left alone with God and you can hear God speak to you. You can pick up his word and read it, or you can just meditate on God. Rather than pray at God, maybe you can just sit there and listen to try to hear God. 
And I encourage people to do that. I mean, we bombard God with our prayers and pray and everything. But, you know, sometimes it's a good thing just to sit back and listen to God. Okay, so Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, right around where your joint bone there connects with a femur, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with this person. This person was Jesus Christ. And he said, the person, Jesus Christ, said, let me go, for the day breaks. And Jacob said, I will not let thee go unless you bless me first. And so what I'm encouraging you today is don't let go until you get your blessing. Whatever it is that you want from God, don't let go. Like I just said about Abraham and his wife Sarah, he refused to let go. And Jacob here is doing the same thing. He's wrestling with God. And God's saying, you know, and, and as he's wrestling with his man, who's really Christ. He's saying, let me go. And Jacob's saying, hey, even though I've lost the strength of my body, which was in your leg, I am going to refuse to let go until I get my promise from God, until I get blessed. So, I want you to know that you must hang on. You know, I'll tell you a brief story as these lessons pass through real quickly. There was a woman that was in sports, and she was going to uh, swim from Alcatraz all the way to the shore. So, they had their boats on either side, and they were... Moving toward the shore, she got into the water and began to swim. And so she was going to swim and set some kind of record. So she swam and she swam and she swam. And they kept the sharks away with her boats and everything. And she swam. And just as, it, as she, she didn't know this, but as she was getting closer to shore, a great fog came in. And because she saw the fog and could not see the shore, she stopped got discouraged, and jumped back into the boat. So then they went forward about another 60 feet, and seen there was the shore. She gave up early, so they did it again. Another week or two later, she decided she would swim the channel. And getting into the water, she began to swim and swim and swim toward the shoreline. Maybe this was a couple miles two or three or four miles of swimming. That would be exhausting for anybody. But this time when the fog come rolling in, she didn't stop because she knew from last time that that fog was just a block. It was just in the way that the shoreline was not far off. So she swam right through the fog and made it all the way to shore and accomplished her goal and reached and won an achievement and an award for going right on through. Sometimes, what I'm trying to tell you, beloved, is sometimes what seems to be a block, that the answer is just right around the corner. So to be persistent until you get what you want from God. And no, don't be blocked by the fog. The answer is probably right there on the shore that you just don't even see it yet. So I want to tell you that God never changes. The same God that heals in the Old Testament is the same God that heals today. So I don't have a lot of time left, but I want to tell you that I believe there really is only one way to all the treasures of God, and that is by faith and faith alone. All his promises, as I said, are yes and amen. A way has been made. It is the way of faith. It is a beautiful way. The just shall live by faith, and we walk by faith and not by sight. Like I told you about the woman who just went through the fog. She went right on through it, not being moved by what she saw, but believing that the shore 
and knowing that the shore was close by, she went right on through it till she gained to the victory. So sometimes that is what we have to do. And so we walk by faith and not by sight. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by him. So having a zeal in our prayers, believe that Jesus will answer you. Pray into the heavens before the throne of grace. You will not be disappointed. Will you take him today? I'm asking you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you will acknowledge him, if you will believe in him, not just say, well, I know he existed or I know he exists. If you'll really believe in him and say, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins. I believe you died on the cross for me and came back to life after three days. I ask you to forgive me my sins. Come into my heart and help me to be a new creation for you. Help me to be a new creature for you. Help me to live for you. Help me to believe for you. Help my faith. Help my unbelief. And come into my heart and help me to live for you. If you'll do that and say that prayer, what I just said right now, Jesus Christ has come into your heart. And expect a big change because God doesn't want anyone to perish but all to come to repentance to come to him salvation is at your door this day the salvation of your soul and the salvation of your body and to give you the desires of your heart to give you a hope and to give you a future is what God wants to do so in closing I just want to say believe God today that he will deliver you from all of your troubles and everybody in this world, at one time or another, goes through them. But if you'll believe in him and hold on to him, as I've already expressed, you will find relief and you will find victory if you'll just believe. So until next week, this is Evangelist Gary Lee reminding you that there's three important things that you want to remember. That's faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of all of these is love. God bless.